Do you ever wonder, why do I always seem to give so much more than I get? All I want is to be appreciated and loved. Is that asking too much? Why do all the jerks get the hot girls while I get stuck in the friend zone? When will it ever be my turn? If this sounds like you, you're in the right place. Welcome to The Nice Guy Show. This is the podcast that asks the question, how do I break free from the nice guy syndrome so I never have to come in last again? Now here are your hosts, Faisal Coker and Chuck Chapman. Welcome to The Nice Guy Show. And today's topic is about dating. We're going to be looking at six reasons why nice guy really struggle with dating. So have you had enough of the lame dating apps, constant no matches, feeling invisible, flaky dates, and the dreaded friend zone? And you want to know when will it be your turn? So let's go through some of the six challenges that nice guys experience when dating. And it doesn't have to be a struggle. It doesn't have to be chaotic out there. And I know it's difficult, but let's go through and how you can overcome this. So I've got myself today's great host. We've got Ari and Chuck. Gentlemen, the dating world. I don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm married. You don't have to worry about it because you're married. Ah. Yeah. 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 Chuck, Chuck is a dating success. I'm so. the six guy. I'm the, I'm the poster child for what you want to. Yeah. <laughs> So you're the, so you have the outcome of what the purpose of dating is, you know, you have the date and then you get the relationship you want. Right. Yeah. Well, I think that's, that's maybe part of it for guys. I mean, maybe some guys just want to, you know, go out with somebody, they, but I think ultimately the purpose of dating is trying to find that long-term partner. Um, at least that's why I think a lot of guys I work with date is because they don't want to be lonely and they want to find somebody that they can have a long-term relationship with. So I think the outcome oftentimes is that, and I think that that's probably one of the things that gets nice guys in trouble is because they're attached to the outcome, right? They're thinking, you know, the first date, okay, you know, I want to, what's this girl going to be like and how can I keep her and how can I, uh, you know, make her, make her mine. And we'll, we'll get into that more, I think, as we talk about these six different reasons, but I don't know. That's my, that's sort of my opinion about it is that most of us at least date with the reason for finding that one. Yeah. And what I want to cover is because, you know, dating, I mean, you probably dated in the 1940s or something like a long time ago. So <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. It was a long time ago. So today's, today's landscape in 2023 is very different you know we've got dating apps i don't know if you've heard of them chuck you know and there's a lot of <laughs> swiping going on there's 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 a lot of frustration i I'm, i meet so many guys that are saying this is rigged i hate this it's soul destroying right so going out in the dating world i know it's painful right but i want to see what it is like and i know ari you've gone through uh, a breakup and then now you're back in the dating world so what's what's the experience like for you you know, as you guys were talking, I just thought of a couple more uh, ways that nice guys can suck at dating. And one of them was this idea of not having fun with dating mm -hmm. and not, not being grateful about dating. Like if you're going into this thinking that this is going to suck, there's not women out there. <clears throat> um, this, is, this is a chore. This is boring. Um, you're obviously going to send that message to women. Um, so I, I think th this is one of the, the challenges uh, for, for men is to work on your mindset. Um, that there's, I, and I, may, I may have even taken one of your reasons, Chuck, but oh well. Uh, <laughs> there, there's, there's an abundance of reasons right. out there. So yeah, having a, a scarcity mindset uh, is something that can get in the way and, and just not having fun with it. Like dating is supposed to be fun. And yeah, you, you should be in that that mindset before you go on a date. One of the things uh, Faisal uh, taught me was about priming, priming with the breath, um, just to change your energy before a date. You know, if you're feeling low energy, if you're feeling down or anxious, like get yourself in the right 
energy state. So that, that, that's one of the, the, uh, the things that can get in the way and, and take homes and something I've worked on. You know, that reminded me, uh, Ari, about like being in the right frame of mind when you go on a date and the attitude that you have with it. I remember I was uh, I went on a date um, some time ago and uh, I was listening to an audio book and I was really engrossed in this audio book and I was meeting my date. I was meeting my date at the station. And as soon as I met her, you know, and we already met at a party before I met her and said, hi. And immediately there was this tension. There was this like stress. And I thought, well, this is a great start. It's awkward already. So I said, hey, you know, we just carried on and we were going to a bar and we just walked and there was like an awkward silence and she didn't say much. I didn't say much. And I was trying, you know, I was trying to start the conversation, but it was very cold and it was very blocked off. Anyway, as we were walking along, uh, I got a pebble stuck in my shoe. And it just started making these really funny noises. And I just started laughing. And I just took, took I said, hang on a minute, I've just got to take this out. And she just burst out laughing. And then she went, ah, oh, thank God for that. I said, boy, <laughs> I was feeling really stressed. I was feeling real, she could, I could feel your tension. But because my attention was in, in, in my, I was in my head because I was thinking of the audio book, I wasn't really primed and present for the date. So she was feeling that tension and it closed her off. So it's a really good point, um, Ari, about this. But also, I want to quickly ask you guys as well, like, what's been your experience? I know, uh, Chuck, you know, you, uh, you've you been married, but what was your experience like when you were dating? What was, you know, what was the, some of the things that you came across? Any any juicy stories? Well, yeah. And, you know, it's, it actually, I haven't been that long that I've been married. It's my third marriage. So, uh, and the there weren't, there weren't the apps, but there were the websites back then, you know, so, uh, my wife and I met online, but before that, you know, I was dating a lot of, uh, different women, meeting them online, going out for dates, that kind of thing. And, and I think that was one of the things that I noticed oftentimes was, you know, I'd go out on a date with somebody and you could just kind of tell within the first 30 seconds, whether or not this was somebody that you really were going to connect with or not. And, and so I think one of the mistakes I made was I was, I was trying to sort of fit a square peg into a round hole of, of like, okay, I'm not feeling this connection. I'm not feeling this chemistry, but I've got like, you know, an hour left of this date. So how am I going to fill this time up? And, um, and, and I remember specifically one date with a woman and, my mistake was, you know, setting up a dinner date. Actually, this was like a Sunday afternoon dinner. <laughs> and, and so you're, you know, you're there and it's like, okay, you got to waiting for the check to come because you could just tell that this wasn't going to go anywhere. And she was talking about like her last boyfriend who was like a bajillionaire and took her on these expensive cruises and, you know, flew her all over the place and stuff like that. And it was just, like an immediate kind of turn off. And then she was telling me about a ghost that was in her house and um, that she was friends with this ghost in her house. And, and I, I it was just like, I saved know. that for the second date. <laughs> you <would> think, <laughs> right. <laughs> and I was like, can we get out of here soon enough? You know, now here's the funny thing was a couple years later, I'd met my wife and my wife had, a friend who worked at this church and he was, um, he was retiring and they were throwing a party for him at this church. So we went to the service beforehand and this woman that I dated on this date, not kidding, she sits right next to me. And then in the service, they're like, okay, everybody introduce yourself, you know? And, and she, she's like, pretends like she doesn't know me. And I'm like, this date was bad enough. You remember me. And so I just called it out. I was like, oh yeah, we went on a date one time. <laughs> <laughs> and you can just see your face. She probably just, she probably just remembers the ghost. No, yeah, she it just, wasn't yeah. me. It was the ghost. You went, yeah, it was wasn't right, me. Exactly. It was the ghost that went on a date with. <laughs> yeah, love that. Ari, you must have some stories. Oh, for bad dates. What? Well, just you know, your dating experience. You know, what? what we, yeah, let's have a bad date experience. Um, just you know, like not really trusting what I'm seeing in someone's 
like dating app profile, like their pictures look very different. I, I don't know if you you've experienced this Faisal, uh, you know, like that a woman's appearance can change drastically over the course of five pictures. Um, <laughs> yes. Over the so course you between can... when you when you, when you <laughs> see her and then when you actually meet her. <laughs> well, even yeah. even between the different pictures. Um, so that that's a red flag. Um, mm. But yeah, w when you meet them and they they look different, they fifteen they years might have older a different... than. Yeah, it's like a completely different person. You're looking around and it's going, where is my date? And she's like, I'm here. You're like, no, it's not. <laughs> You're like, where if, yeah. Maybe, maybe, dating, maybe dating apps should um, have a, some pictures saying unfiltered photos. Oh. Yeah, so we can, yeah, and real height check for guys. Because I know women say, wow, well, he's, no, he's, he's not really... 43 it's actually 53 and he's not six foot four he's actually five foot four you know that's a complaint i hear as well yeah so i've just i've made mistakes like some some women this especially the last few years they they use those strange filters mm -hmm. on their uh their photos snapchat, snapchat filters on, yeah you're probably the wrong apps that snapchat <laughs> is not the place to <laughs> you're like where are your cat ears i thought you had yeah. cat ears why do you have whiskers <laughs> I, I, I did. I told a woman, this is a woman I had actually been out with once or twice. Like she sent me a, a photo and she was wearing some, like these cool looking glasses and I complimented them. And of course it was a Snapchat filter. So I got roasted for that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I think you, you've got to trust your judgment, not just about photos, but about their, their profiles. You know, if they don't, if they don't have much content in their profile, to me, that's a red flag, um, which I've ignored many times. Uh, if, if they don't text back uh, promptly, it's a red flag. Um, you know, if, if they're sketchy and they don't provide sort of complete information about themselves, it's a red flag. Yeah. Um, yeah. all of which I've ignored <laughs> a number of times. So, you know, then you get the, uh, the benefit of learning from your mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot of, uh, I think that that's what I see a lot of guys just ignore the red flags because they're so desperate for a connection. They're so desperate to actually get a date and get some experience and thinking, you know, what, I'll just take anything for now because it's better than just another and, you know, no swipe, no connection, no reply. I just, you know, tolerate that. And, you know, I, I've seen a lot of guys and, I, and I'm, I was guilty of this as well, just settling down and you know, settling with somebody who I thought ah, was more second best than I really wanted. And, you know, that, this is one of the biggest things I see with nice guys. They, you know, they choose second best. They're like, okay, you know what? There's nothing else going on. I'm thirsty for some women. I'm hungry for some women. I'm so horny. I just need to get laid or I just need to go on a date. I, I just want to end my loneliness. So, you know, this will do. And uh, that really, you know, is a really bad strategy. So let's go through some of the, the six reasons why nice guys really struggle with it. So, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll share to each and um and then hopefully you can navigate between you know uh and get a better result with dating as well so uh let's start with you chuck chuck what's your number one uh why guys suck with uh, dating well a lot of guys suck at dating because they come into it with a, a mindset of kind of like what i was talking about with this attachment to the outcome like i have to make her mine in some way and uh I had a, I had a coaching client that I was working with. Um, I was working with him for about two years and he started out like just being a, a nervous wreck. And we really worked on embodiment practices and just getting his nervous system kind of in check. And then he would go out on dates and this guy was going out like every week, two, three dates. He would just, you know, we, we coached him on the apps and he just went straight for, Hey, let's go for a drink. And, and he was going out on these dates. And then he'd meet somebody and it would last for maybe three weeks, four weeks, something like that. And then there would be like this giant red flag that would happen um, and he'd end up breaking up with them. And I gave him this approach uh, about 
eight months ago. And this was, I gave it to him then because that's when I kind of came up with it myself, which was instead of approaching dating as like, okay, I've got to get them to like me, approach it as if you are a business and you're looking for an employee. All right. So you have this position that's open. How do you, how, if you had a business and you had a position open, you would first look at resumes. You'd look at the resumes and then you would say, okay, here's some that I think might qualify. I'm going to call them in for a short interview. So I'm going to go on a coffee date or something like that. Something that I can get out of quickly. If I know, you know, this isn't going anywhere after that short date, they may get advanced to a second date, which is a longer date, you know, and then there may be a third or fourth date, you know, but and the dates are interviews essentially. And then you make an offer and you would say, Hey, I would like to date you regularly. I want to hire you. Well, when you get, when you hire somebody, they don't get benefits right away. They had to wait 90 days or something like that. Nice guys tend to be like, okay, you know, we've gone out in three dates. Why don't you move in with me? Let's you know, full benefits here. <laughs> right. And there's a reason you wait 90 days because you're not certain of, of that. Then after the 90 days goes by, then you're like, okay, I want to offer you the full-time position of girlfriend. And then it's like, okay, I have, I want to promote you to these different phases, but I've got to check it out and see if you're going to work well in this. So phase two would be um, more of a part, you know, the partnership. So maybe it would be, okay, you've been a great girlfriend for the last year, year and a half. I want to give you a promotion to fiance, you know, and then a year or so later you say, okay, I want to finally offer you a partnership in my organization. And when you approach it like that, like you're looking for a potential partner and not all of them, it really takes away the, the fear because you're interviewing them and you're trying to get them to join you as opposed to like, I'm trying to get you to want me. Um, and I so this guy this. was working with, yeah. uh, this guy was working with, he started doing that and it, everything changed. Like he met this girl, they started dating. Um, and last week he sent me a photo of him and his girlfriend. He's in a tux and she's in a wedding gown and they got married. Yeah. Wow. And it was, it was about after two years of working with him, you know, he finally found the woman and she's stunningly beautiful. He's, you know, over the moon. Um, but she really qualifies as a partnership and has a lot of the same goals as a lot of the same aspirations. And so I'm just really proud of him. I'm I'm glad you uh you know told us the outcome of what happened because you just took away I mean if if there's women listening to this they'll be like Chuck's just taking all the romance out of <laughs> <laughs> well in some ways yeah I mean you got to take you take like, the um, the emotional piece out right and then you have more of a clear yeah. head of you're looking at it this from a kind of a practical standpoint in some ways I love this you're I can I can see, I can see Ari going out now with a, with a clipboard, you know, yeah, interview yeah. questions. Yeah. And I've known, I've known, I, I went on a date with this uh, girl and she was telling me, she said, I actually had a guy with a clipboard and 100 questions. And she <laughs> said, I was so fast. She said, I was so fascinated. She goes, I went with it. And then he sent me a report, emailed a report back. I was like, <laughs> have you still got that email she said no it was funny yeah I was like, wow awesome. there, there are some people with clipboards and surveys i was like this guy's taking he's he's been he's been uh really getting this job with chuck <laughs> well it's all about balance, to be right? a, yeah i was gonna i'm gonna start giving women a 90-day probationary period at the beginning mm -hmm. yeah do you have hr as well do you have like a team of hr <laughs> you, you guys are my hr yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I really like what you're saying, Chuck, like this, this idea of you're assessing the woman. Yeah. And, and too, too often, nice guys, uh, we're so worried about how they're going to assess us. Mm -hmm. and, and that's all we think about. Are they going to like me? Yes. Um, yeah. Are they going to want to keep dating me? If you can, if you can get yourself back into thinking about how you're assessing them, 
and what you're thinking about them, it's going to be much easier to take the lead and be, be more confident, you know, because you're, you're taking your power back. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of the things I always say is, you know, nice guys impress, whereas high value men assess. You know, okay. So nice guys are always looking to impress everybody, whereas high value men are always assessing to see their, you know, if they meet their requirements, you know, and vice versa. So, uh, yeah, really good point there. So, Ari, what's your number one reason for um, why nice cars can't get, get on with dating? Well, something that I've talked about a little bit, like on some of the previous uh, podcasts, you know, nice guys tend to approach dating in a, in a needy way. Um, I, sh- I could do a course on neediness, I think. Um, you should. I should. Okay. Um, so, you know, spending too much time giving your attention to someone at the beginning, you know, that that's one of the signs that you're approaching dating in a needy way, you know, so give your attention, but don't give much more attention than the other person will, you know, um, that's one of the ways to kind of be mindful of, of your neediness. Um, it's not that feeling needy is bad. We all feel needy at times, but you know, again, that's where you have to have your own internal practices or resources or supports for you to, to meet your emotional needs. You know, you're not, you don't do it through people you date, at least not at the beginning and not in this kind of needy way. So if you're spending a lot of time texting or on the phone, especially if if it's before you've even met them or early in in dating someone, that's a sign that you might be approaching dating in a needy way. Um, So it's normal to want attention, to want affection, to want validation, but you got to have other ways of getting those things. So that's one of my, my number one uh, ways that nice guys get in their way. And uh, following on from that, so my number one is that nice guys are feminine. And, you know, that kind of like ties in with what you're saying, Ari, because neediness is a real feminine energy. It's not about the gender, it's about the feminine energy. Needy, neediness is uh, highly um, attuned to the feminine energy there. So when nice guys turn up on dates, they... Uh, demonstrate more the nice behavior and the nice behavior evokes more feminine energy. It's it's seen as more feminine energy. Whereas, uh, and how do we know this? Because a lot of women, uh, when I speak to a lot of women and they tell me, you know, and they all say the same thing. He didn't trigger my chemistry. I didn't feel any chemistry for him. I didn't feel this. I didn't get this feeling for him. So a lot of nice guys show up with the nice, um, energy and what she's looking for is strength she wants to know that i am there with a masculine man and i want to feel the primal kind of uh feelings that he you know he he can when he needs to show up he can provide for me he can protect me because nice guys are too malleable they're too soft they're too agreeable um they're too needy she knows that you know uh, he won't be able to, you know, show up in a strong way, and he lacks confidence. He's too nervous on on dates, so he's coming a lot too soft, and that never triggers a woman's chemistry. So that's my number one. Uh, let's go to number two. What's your second one, uh, Chuck? Yeah. So number two is that you know nice guys get easily butt hurt, and it goes along with the rejection piece. Right. And it goes along with what you were saying, Faisal, about kind of dropping down into that lower energy. When you are coming from a place of trying to avoid rejection, right? and then when you do get rejection, you fall down into that lower feminine and you're in that victim state of, you know, why doesn't she like me or what did I do wrong or how do I... And you're just projecting that energy. It's not the energy of strength. It's not the energy of... of uh, confidence, which again, I think going back to my first point, I think approaching it as an interview sort of sets you up to have more confidence 
in the date. But uh, one of the things that I've noticed about a lot of nice guys is that a lot of nice guys have ADHD or symptoms of ADHD or on a spectrum. And one of the things that I recently learned about ADHD is there's something called the uh, rejection sensitivity dysmorphia, which again, there's this correlation between nice guys, ADHD, ADHD, and uh, rejection sensitivity dysmorphia. In other words, because of the ADHD, they're more sensitive to rejection. They actually like feel it in their body, which is why the dysmorphia tag has been added to it, that you feel this immense, like almost like a gut punch at the slightest um, amount of any kind of perceived rejection. And, and so learning to really re-regulate yourself and rewire your nervous system so that you don't fall into that fight or flight, in this case flight, where you're falling down into that lower vibration of fear and, um, you know, self-pity and all of those kind of things in that rejection and to be able to like transcend that, bring your vibration up to one of strength and courage and all that, that that is something that we have to learn to master within ourselves. So easily butt hurt. Nice guys get easily butt hurt at the slightest, um, at the, at the slightest bit of even perceived rejection it may not even be rejection, just their perception of it. Yeah. I think, I think that's really important. Like I, I, I was, I was talking to a client about that last week. He, he was dating someone, but uh, they had turned down sex with him and it was clear he was, he was feeling butthurt by it. And uh, yeah, I, I, I broke it down to a rule, like just never act butthurt. You know, it, um, it always kills chemistry. You know, when, when you put it in those plain terms, it always kills chemistry. It's never in your favor. It, it simplifies it for them. Just never do it. But it's also, I think, a, it's, it's such a biological response mm -hmm. that, you know, they're not doing it by choice. They're doing it as a trigger mechanism within them, which is why it takes some practice to really kind of, I mean, the idea of, okay, I, but her kills chemistry, but now, now that I know that, how do I practice, how do I shift that within myself? How do I shift my nervous system? And I think that's comes through embodiment work, through meditation, through, mm -hmm. um, those kind of things that yeah, I th your nervous system. I think it, but it's this idea you're responsible for your feelings, right? Yeah. You know? And, that, and that's where having that rule can be helpful. It, do, it doesn't uh, give you those grounding practices, which you, mm -hmm. which you need, but it, yeah. it's a reminder that that's your responsibility is right. to create, create those practices, those internal resources to center yep. yourself. Yep. Great point. What about you, Faisal? What's your next one? Uh, so, so it kind of goes on to what you to you guys are you know talking about which is you know fear of rejection or looking foolish you know that's you know the number one fear that a lot of guys have is you know i don't want to talk to her i don't want to approach her i don't want to say anything that will make me look uh you know foolish embarrassed or i, I mean this is the struggle i had as well i wouldn't uh, i remember when i after my divorce i you know i, I was you, know, you find yourself single and you're going, oh, you know, there's a lot of mindset issues like you talked about, Chuck, and, and there's a lot of you know, negativity. There's a lot of limita you know, limiting beliefs that came up. And then, I, you know, I would, uh, I remember approaching uh, a girl and then, you know, I was very you know, awkward about it. And then she rejected me and, I, and then I gave it a meaning. And I gave it a meaning. It's like, oh, you know, I told you. Uh, I'm not good enough. And so my shame came out. It triggered a lot of toxic shame in myself. So a lot of guys have this extreme, excruciating pain of shame. And shame is the voice of, I'm not good enough. And then I told you so, women don't like me. 
And because when we have this narrative running, they go into this negative spiral and this feedback loop is always about, you're not good enough, you can't go out, women ain't gonna like you, you're not good enough for them, I'm not funny enough, I'm not charismatic enough, I'm not confident enough, and they just go on and on and on. And so what they try to do is they try to keep themselves safe by playing it really safe. So a lot of guys, nice guys, just so afraid of taking the leap. And then when you talked about, you know, like taking it but her, it's very natural. And I remember um, I was uh, I was with some of the clients and one guy, uh, she kind of rejected him and he took offense. And it's like, uh, he got really angry about it. And then he started saying, well, well what's wrong with me? Why, what, you know, why are you rejecting me? And I was just sitting there going, oh, what are you doing? This is the worst thing to do. Because what happens is, because he got so triggered by it, his, uh, he went in straight into his emotional brain. So his name is amygdala, his prefrontal cortex, his logical brain completely went offline. And now he's down in this spiral and you can just see her, I could see her reaction was like closing off and then she became quiet and then she was like really withdrawn about it. Because he, he lost, you know, one of the things that I talk about rule, you know, uh, most powerful rule as a man is to keep your cool. You know, I've got this band on, right? And uh, for me, this bracelet means kit, keep it together. So when anyone knocks you, she gives you shit tests, she throws you off guard. She wants to know, she wants to know, will you keep it together? Can you hold your masculine frame? So it's all about frame control. And this is why a lot of guys have this fear because when they go out with rejection or they feel foolish, they lose their frame control and it's really embarrassing for them. So Faisal, I, I want to know, because you know, you, you're very experienced with dating. Mm -hmm. You're, you're an advanced dater. Do you still advanced get dater. a man of advanced age? Um, <laughs> are you, do, do you still feel shame at times? Do you, do you still get caught up in looking foolish, whether you look foolish, do you, do you still feel embarrassed? Um, yes. Is it still happening to you even, even with your experience, even with your success? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and this is the thing a lot of guys think, and a lot of marketing says, you know, be completely rejection free, never, ever feel any fear. I mean, that's probably the worst thing, um, you know, you can actually tell somebody or, or allude to, for example, you know, I still feel those emotions. The only difference between what I, you know, when I first started off is I used to go out three, four times a week. I said, I really want to get this handle. I have this real intense sh social anxiety, talking to people, even if it's in a business environment, even if it's a networking environment, I was, I was really afraid to talk to people. So has it changed? The only difference is now I'm very confident. I would go and speak and I will work the room. But the thing is, I will still feel, experience those emotions. Those ex emotions haven't gone. But what's happened is I manage those emotions much better most of the time. So I'm better at managing them. I'm better, better at not, uh, I'm better at letting them go. So for example, uh, you know, even if I want to talk to, um, even at parties or, or anywhere I'm going, I will still feel this anxiety and then I'll just quickly let it go and say, look, just carry on. And I ask myself, you know, what would courage do right now? This is a great thing I'm teaching guys now. It's like, how would, if you had more courage, how would you show up? So just stepping into that realm and saying, you know, I will feel the feelings, I'll let it pass, and then I'll act purposefully. And a lot of guys say to me, well, how can I become more confident? The thing is, reading more books listening to a lot of YouTube videos won't get rid of your feelings, right? But what will happen is that the feeling of confidence comes after the act of confidence. This is what uh, Dr. Steve Harris said in, in his book, Confidence Gap. So it's just getting back out there, out there, out there. If you want a solution for all the emotions that you have and the struggle and rejection, practice, practice, practice. There's nothing better with it. That's a great point there. I think so many things in life are like that where, uh, you know, whether it's confidence or motivation, 
Um, you know, you have to do the thing, you do the thing and then the thing follows, right? So if, if you're procrastinating and you're saying, well, I'm one, I want, I want more, you know, uh, I don't want to, uh, I want to feel inspired or whatever you feel inspired after you started. So same thing with the, the dating, you know, you're going to feel like talking to the woman after you started talking to her. So excellent point. Yeah. So, uh, let's wrap this up. Uh, any other one kind of like wisdom advice that you want to give about dating? Cause I know we have part two, part two, we're going to go on and cover more aspects to it as well. So any kind of like last words you want to give them, uh, before we go. So Chuck. Don't date women who have ghosts in their house. That would be my number one. I guess, I, I guess the thing to kind of to Ari's point is, is like, don't ignore the red flags, especially up front. If they're, if they're showing up on date one, guess what? That's going to be something that's going to be an ongoing issue. I love that. Okay. So don't take, so adds a whole world to, uh, adds a whole meaning to the word being ghosted. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Ari, what's your last word of wisdom you want to share? Well, I, I got a couple of things. Uh, I, I just wanted to piggyback on what Chuck said, you know, pay attention, pay attention to all the information that you're getting. Like, you know, the, the, if you're, if you're on a dating app, they're giving you a lot of information. Even the absence of information is valuable. It's, it tells you how they're, how they show up. If they tell you on their uh, app profile, I'm not here much. Go find me on Instagram or on Snapchat or, or cash at me $50 <laughs> red flags. Yeah. Those are mistakes I haven't made, but uh, I'm, I'm aware they can be made. Um, but the, the, yeah, the it, my friend, <laughs> my, my friend, cash app them fifty dollars yeah. and didn't get it back. Um, but the the point that I wanted to make was, you know, dating is one more domain of your life to be conscious, to, mm -hmm. and, and it's it's something where you have to take full responsibility to learn the skills to make it go well. You know, it's not just something that you see what happens, see what happens with, with this next person. You know, there's all kinds of things you can practice, take responsibility. Yeah. I love that one. Uh, the last thing I want to share, um, is, you know, how you date will determine the type of relationship you will have. You know, if you date well, you're more likely to, put, you know, get into healthy relationships. If you get dating wrong, you're more likely to end up in toxic, dysfunctional relationships. So it's important to really pay attention to this process because dating is your gateway to the type of relationship. And how you manage this, how you do this, reflect by your, the relationships that you will create. And also, like you guys said, have fun, right? Bring back the fun to this. So, I, and speaking of fun, this has been a real fun conversation. I really enjoyed it. I love all the stories, especially yours, Chuck, with the, the ghost one as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the uh, part two of this. So, guys, stay tuned for the part two of, you know, dating and how you can avoid sucking at it. Until then. You've been listening to The Nice Guy Show the podcast that helps nice guys move past their insecurities and fears into the fullness of their masculine strength and confidence. Be sure to like and subscribe to our podcast and check out the website niceguyshow.com for more information on how to connect with Chuck and Faisal. Until next time, keep living your best life.